Hey guys, Keylime here, this time with a video that's kind of going over uh, Guild Wars and everything about Guild Wars. So if you're very curious about how Guild Wars works, how to optimize to play it as best as you possibly can, how the scoring works, how the brackets work, all that fun stuff, uh, this is your video. So it all starts not in the troop menu, it starts in the guild menu, in the Guild Wars menu. So this is telling you what the schedule is going to look like, and it's telling you what color day every single day is. So Monday is kind of your setup prep day, and then every single day from then on is a fight. So this is Tuesday, this is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So on Tuesday, it's telling you that you need to be attacking with purple troops. Do not worry about your defenses when it comes to the colors. Just worry about your attacks. So when you're attacking, make sure that you're using four purple troops on purple day, four blue troops on blue day, etc. Um, also, what you want to be doing on the, that Monday is far, part of your prep is actually setting uh, these sentinels so you can purchase these. This is giving you stat bumps across the board so all of these will apply during Guild Wars. Um, Guild Wars is kind of like a super pumped up troop day so make sure you buy these as much as you possibly can. I recommend getting it up to five it's really not that expensive to do it but if you can't get up to five get as high as you can as the game tells you it's actually benefiting the guildmates above you so when you're looking at um, the placement of where you are in the guild uh, so based on how you did on the last guild wars it's where you're going to get placed here so whoever had the highest number of points in the last guild wars is going to be your paragon and then your second and third people are going to be champion and then so on and so forth so people that are buying sentinels down at the soldier level someone that's getting all five is actually applying to everyone in the vanguard level everyone in the herald level champion level and paragon level so buying Sentinels is a really nice way to contribute to Guild Wars, even if you're not necessarily doing as well as other people in your guild. Just buying the Sentinels is going to help out your guild a lot. Um, so definitely do invest in Sentinels as much as you can. It's actually pretty important. Um, but then on Monday, what you want to be doing is setting up all of your defenses. So the game is telling you that to get the most number of points on defense, just make sure that every single troop is different. So you don't have to worry about the colors again. So this is like a blue day and I only have one blue troop. Um, so don't worry about that. Just worry that every single picture, every single troop is different. Every weapon is different. You can reuse classes. That's totally fine. Just make sure that every single weapon, every single troop that you're using is different for every single day. Um, that's going to get you 12,000 points right away. You don't have to do anything else. You just... Make a bunch of teams specific for those days and you're going to get 12,000 points. So hooray for you. You just did 12,000 points for just setting up some teams. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then when it comes to defenses, really the only thing you need to be thinking about is just putting together competent teams. But then also, uh, if you want to get a little tricky about it, think about what color day it is and what types of troops they might be using on blue day, for instance. So for Blue Day, I don't necessarily know what kind of troops they're going to use to attack, but I know they want blue mana. So having someone like Moon Rabbit is very cool because he's converting all blues to yellow. So that means that on Blue Day, when they're trying to attack with four blue troops, I have a troop that's getting rid of all the blue mana on the board on the turn one. So think about that a little bit as you're making your teams. Um, I'll also say that Frost Mage is generally a very strong class to use on Guild Wars defense. Reason being that all of these troops are going to be using blue, for instance. So if I freeze one of them, then blue mana just totally screws all of them. So Frost Mage is actually very, very strong. If you don't have your hero in the first slot for your defense teams, I strongly recommend Frost Mage. Um, if you were using Titan before, it's almost certainly going to be better if you're running it with Frost Mage, especially on Guild Wars. So that's all defenses is about. Again, just set unique troops all over the place. Just make your teams ahead of time. And on that Monday, make sure you put all these people in their place, because on Tuesday at reset, people are going to be able to start attacking you. Um, do not worry so much about your defense score. Like, obviously winning is great, but it's very common to lose. So don't get disheartened if you're losing every single defense uh, that you have. Um, it's entirely possible that you can win some of them, but generally you lose more than you win. Um, like, this is actually very good scores as far as I'm concerned. So I've won four and I've lost eight. To me, that's actually very good. So again, don't get like super disheartened if you're losing a lot. Um, even if you lose every single one of them, as long as you're getting the 12,000 points, like that's probably the best thing you can do on defense. From there, once you get used to it and you've done a lot of Guild Wars, you'll have a better sense of what defenses you can possibly put there. I'll actually paste these codes in the description, so feel free to steal these teams directly if you'd like. 
I generally do do okay. So, you know, if you set these defenses, you're not going to do terrible. Might not be the best in the world, but it's certainly going to be better than nothing. So feel free to steal them if you'd like. Um, but that gets us to attacks. So again, the attacks are all themed by color. So I'm happening to record this on a yellow day. So on yellow day, you want to make sure that you're using your yellow team. So all four troops should be yellow. And then what you end up doing is in the guild you're fighting against, you're going to attack somebody who's soldier rank uh, to start with. And if you beat that person, you fight somebody who's a vanguard rank and then so on and so forth. So um, this is like pretty interesting because if you fight a soldier and you lose, you're going to have to fight a soldier again. So you can tell how that's going to affect your point total. No matter what, you're only ever going to do five fights. So if you lose this one and then you win it and then you win it and then you win it and then you win it, you're not going to get a chance to fight the Paragon, which means the maximum number of points you could potentially earn isn't available to you. So you can kind of see how that's going to affect your scores as you go through. You know, when you lose, you don't get the points, or as many points, I should say. Um, and then, of course, the maximum point potential that you can get is reduced a little bit. So try and win all these fights, of course. Um, but, you know, don't freak out or don't get super stressed if you lose one. Um, you'll see that I actually lost two on my first day which was pretty frustrating but you got to kind of shake it off sometimes the board just doesn't work in your favor sometimes a team that you won with all day the day before happens to not perform on that specific day um, so try not to freak out about your score too much generally a good like score at the end of a day if you get a uh, five wins anything between like 9,000 and 9,600 is like really good so don't freak out um, as long as you win five fights using the right colors, you should get a score that's over 9,000. If you get to like 96, 9,700, like that's top tier scores. That means you did extremely good. Um, there's a lot of little factors that go into this score, but generally just think about if you lose troops, you're going to have a little bit of a hit to your score. And if you're uh, taking a really long time in a game, you're going to lose a little bit of score. Um, certain things like armor destruction actually apparently don't help your score. So... Um, try not to think about optimizing this like super much at the start of the game. Like, don't don't stress this. Just try and win your fights as best as you can. Um, so that's going to be how the days kind of progress. So you're going to look at what the schedules are, and then just make sure that you're fighting with the color teams that you're supposed to do. So similarly to how I had defenses set up for color, you should have attacks set up for color. So looking at like my red attack team, for instance, every single person has red. It doesn't matter if I reuse these troops, so on green day I could use Yao again and not have any penalty, so don't worry about that. Um, you can reuse as much stuff as you want attacking, just make sure on defense you're not doing that. Um, but again, all people need to be using the color for attack day, so on red day I need four red troops. And really focus on mana generation. Mana generation is probably the hardest part of Guild Wars day when you're attacking because all of your people are using a specific color. So, uh, for instance, I have Graves here who can make a bunch of purple. This guy's exploding the board. This person's converting into red. This person's exploding the board. So mana generation is an important part of putting teams together on uh, Guild Wars days. So always kind of keep that in mind when you're doing these kinds of things. The only thing that I'll also throw out there is that there's a weapon called Prismatic Orb. So what this thing is doing is it's creating eight gems of a specific color and then giving them a little bit of armor. Uh, the nice thing about this though is that it uses every single color so if you're putting teams together and you're really struggling to figure out what to do with your hero like you can't find the weapon that kind of fits nicely with the rest of the lineup this is totally like a you know a gimme that the game gives you you can put this on any team that you want and again like you can use this on every single day if you wanted to you don't get any penalty for that so if you're really struggling to figure out what to do with your hero or you're struggling with mana generation this is kind of like a cheap and easy thing you can throw into your team to get a little bit of benefit so when Guild Wars is all said and done, uh, at the end, you know, there's some uh, rewards for this. So just for participating, if you're in like a bracket over 1,000, um, you can jump in and just get some gems uh, for participating. That's pretty cool. But obviously when you get into bracket 1, like these people are all bracket 1, like the rewards get kind of crazy. The best guild in the game gets 1,500 gems. I don't have to explain to you how like crazy high that is. So um, Guild Wars is really fun, like it's kind of a very prestige oriented event, so you kind of get to find out as a guild like how you stack up against the rest of the world. Um, I enjoy it a good amount, some people get really really stressed about it. Um, but at the end of the week what ends up happening is that the people at the top of your bracket are going to move up, 
into the next bracket, and the people at the bottom of your bracket are going to move down into the bottom bracket, uh, into the next bracket below them. Um, when you're in the really, really, really low brackets, if like your guild is just starting out in a bracket and you win by a lot, the game might start kicking you up by a lot, so you don't have to climb from like bracket 1000 to bracket 999 to 998. It can jump you like really, really fast depending on how well you're performing. So it'll generally try and get you to the bracket that you're supposed to be in as quickly as possible. So um, yeah, that's how it goes. At the end of the week, um, you'll see how many points you got. It'll put you into your respective things. You'll see where your rank is. You might get some rewards, um, and you get to be happy. So that's everything you need to worry about when it comes to Guild Wars. Um, so hopefully that video was helpful to you guys. Um, but yeah, that's everything. So this is Keylime signing off. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.